Today, I'm going to show you a quick overview of the Manifest MedEx platform and the three tools that are available to all MX participants. This is gonna be a very quick and high level overview. If you'd like a more detailed discussion or have questions, feel free to reach out to sales at manifestmedx.org and we'd be happy to walk you through in more detail. So first things first, when you log into the Manifest Medix platform, you'll find that um, you come to this universal landing page where you'll find quick start guides, training materials, um, really just some background information that might be helpful as you're getting up and running on the MX platform. You'll find all three of the tools over here on the left-hand side, and we'll go through each one of those here today. The first one that we are going to explore is MX Notify. That's real-time customizable alerts when a patient has a hospital encounter. Uh, so quick orientation to the system. Um, you'll find that these notifications are organized kind of like an inbox. So the most recent notification is going to be here at the top. Um, there's several different ways that you can view these notifications. Uh, you can view them in uh, filtered formats, so you can create custom filters, like if you wanted to view only discharges, for example, you could create a filter for the event type equals discharge, and that's going to filter it down to only discharge notifications. You can type in a custom filter name and click save, and those would show up in the future so that you don't have to create a new filter each time. Uh, you can have, also have different panels. So if you wanted to have a panel for just your high-risk patients or just your diabetes patients, for example, um, that's where you would find the panels here. And then finally, you can kind of toggle between statuses. So if you have multiple people using uh, this platform and you want to keep track on who has been contacted or who's been completed, you can create, um, you know, and toggle between the different statuses of not started in progress and completed. And you can view them as a list up here as well. Final thing is that you can also download all of these notifications. You can download them in their uh, full list or in the filtered format also. So I'm gonna open up a notification next and just show you what you will find in here. This one happens to be a discharge notification. So first section here is all demographic information. That's gonna be things like the patient's address, their contact information. Um, what's really nice about this for our health plan and uh, ambulatory participants is since we're getting this information right from the hospital ADT feed where this patient has just had a hospital encounter, this is really accurate up-to-date information Whereas we've heard that some of our plan and uh, providers maybe sometimes have outdated contact information. So this is really useful for making sure that you have the most up-to-date information. The next section here is the most recent event. So this is going to include things like the date and time, the source facility, a diagnosis description, the chief complaint, even the diagnosis code. Since this one is a discharge disposition, it does include um, uh, the discharge disposition. So we're gonna see here that Terry was discharged to home. Had she been discharged to like a SNF, for example, that would be listed here as well. And then finally, we're seeing the number of inpatient visits and the number of ER visits that this patient has had in the last 12 months. And that's gonna show up down here in the event history. And how this is really beneficial is that you know, so MX Notify is really a snapshot into this one specific hospital encounter. We're getting the data directly from the hospital ADT feed in near real time. It's not a deep dive into the patient history. We'll show you how you can do that here in just a minute. Uh, but this allows you to, at a glance, just see how this patient uses the hospital. You know, is this something where it's an isolated event where Terry broke her leg? Or is this someone who's having a really hard time managing a chronic condition or perhaps uses the ED more like primary care or urgent care to where you might wanna get her back into the office for routine visits. It just gives you a, at a quick glance how the patient uses the hospital. As I mentioned, this is not where you're going to do a deep dive into the patient history. That would be in MX Access, which I will go into next. 
Uh, but before I do that, I did just want to highlight one other thing that we are also getting uh, COVID-19 positive test results. So you are able to describe, uh, subscribe to those if you would be interested in um, receiving those for your patient population. And we're getting COVID-19 tests from um, hospital labs, from county department public of health labs, um, national labs like LabCorp and Quest. So you can subscribe to these notifications as well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hop into our second tool that's called MX Access. And this is the longitudinal patient record. So think of this as where you can do a really deep dive of patient history. It's where we have all of the data in one consolidated record that we're getting from tons of different participants. So it's gonna be a combination of both clinical and claims data. So just again, quick orientation to the system. Up here, you'll just see a couple of flags that you might wanna pay attention to on the patient record. So here we can see that the patient has tested positive for COVID-19. Um, we can also see that over here in these icons. There's a COVID-19 icon. We can see that Terry has some allergies and some abnormal lab results. We can click down here and view demographic information, which does again include things like that contact information, uh, does also include insurance, PCP, the MRNs for all of the different um, facilities that are sending us data on Terry, uh, as well as things like race and, race and ethnicity as well. You can also click and view summaries in tons of different formats here. Uh, some of the most common ones, you can view a PDF, which is printable. So we do see a lot of our ambulatory participants are interested in that. And then over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see all the categories of data. Anything that has a gray bar on the left means that there is data in that category. Anything that's blank means that we just don't have any, any data in that category. And this is where you're going to be able to look for things like gaps in care. Like, for example, I know that Terry is a diabetic patient. I can see that she's had a diabetic foot exam, but I don't see that correlating diabetic eye exam. So that might be something that I want to call out to make sure that Terry gets in her next visit. Maybe combine that with some of the, the things I might see in her lab results. Like I can see she has this abnormal HbA1c. So all those things combined might be something that I want to call out in in um, you know, future visits. You will find that combination, as I mentioned, of both clinical and claims data in a few different categories. You're gonna find it in the medications, the procedures, the encounters, and the problems and diagnoses. And I'm just gonna click in and show you what that looks like and kind of what that benefit is. So here in the medications tab, we have it broken into recent and historical. And you can see that you can toggle between all meds, filled meds, which we're getting from our health plan participants, and also prescribed meds that we're getting from our clinical participants. So it's really helpful to not only be able to see what medications have been prescribed, but what that patient is actually filling as well. So this is really helpful for med rec. Um, and then I'll show you the encounters also. So again, this is broken up into hospital and ED and outpatient. And again, you can toggle up here between all the encounters, the clinically sourced that we're getting from hospitals, and medical groups, and the claims sourced as well that we're getting from our health plans. And just one benefit of being able to see the claims data here is that, you know, say that this patient has a hospital encounter, has an encounter at a medical group that's on paper, or just in general, they don't share data or aren't a part of our network. Normally that would be a black hole of data that we don't have, but because we work with the health plans and we work with eight of the largest health plans in California, um, some of those being Blue Shield, Anthem, HealthNet, Inland Empire, Health Plan, Health Plan of San Joaquin, um, Golden State Medicare, Brand New Day Medicare, and then also our most recent addition is Gold Coast Health Plan, uh, Medical Plan in Ventura. So we'll be getting claims data from all of them, which is used to power this. And so if that member is a, a member of one of those health plans, you would be able to see that claims data as well. So it's just a really great way of kind of filling in that full patient history. A Couple other things that I'll just quickly highlight on here 
is that in the lab section, you can view all of this lab data in several different ways. So I'm gonna show you the HbA1c because we have several results here. You can click in and view the individual result. You can also view order details, includes things like the ordering clinician, the date and time, stuff like that. And then you can also view this in a cumulative format and see the different, um, you know, the different test results or even view them in a graph format to see how things have kind of trended over time. We do also get the um, radiology reports. So they are not images, they are written reports, um, but you are able to have access to, um, you know, to these summaries here. And then under the documents tab, you'll see that we have things like pathology reports, op notes, consult notes, progress notes, um, discharge summaries, just kind of a wide variety of documents that we're getting from our participants. We do get CCDAs from our uh, hospitals and medical groups, and we do parse some of that information and it's included in these different, um, you know, in these different sections here, but any other documents you could find there in the documents tab. And then finally here we have vaccination information as well. So, um, you know, I assume as co the COVID-19 vaccinations get more, um, you know, more common, we're gonna see a lot more use for this here. So as a summary, really think of this as where you can do that deep dive of patient history. Um, you know, say that you had a patient that had a hospital encounter, you got that notification through MX Notify, and this is where you would go in to really do the deep digging and learn about what's been going on with that patient, how you might wanna follow up um, in the future. So the first two tools that I've gone over here, Notify and Access, are really focused on that individual patient level. If you want to scan your population and understand the risk of things like ED visits, inpatient admissions, mortality, you'll want to use MX Analyze, which is population health risk prediction and um, tracking through that. So I'm going to load this here and go through a very high level overview of this. We could talk about this for a long, long time. So again, feel free to reach out to sales at manifestmedx.org if you'd like to get into more detail with this. So right now I have no filters applied and I'm looking at a total population of about 312,000 people. And this first section here is broken up into actual data about that population. So actual inpatient admissions, ED visits, mortality. The only caveat here is that since we don't collect financial information, uh, from our participants, the cost is based off of national averages. So it's gonna be really great for comparing things like um, who's gonna be your high cost patients, whose cost is likely going to increase, um, stuff like that, but the numbers themselves might be a little bit different. This next section here is all the predicted risk. So again, predicted risk of cost, inpatient admission, ED visits and mortality. And as I mentioned, we don't have any filters applied. So most really fall into that low zero to 10% risk range. I will show some filters here in a minute and we'll see how um, these kind of even out once you take out that really healthy population. This next section here is really anyone that's had a significant risk change, whether that's good or bad in the last 30 or 90 days. So it just gives you a sense of who's had that really significant jump. And one thing to mention too, is that you can download all of this information as well. This next section here is all focused on kind of ways to break down the population. So we have our age and gender distribution, line of business, chronic disease count, we have the patient origin, which can go down to all the way down to the zip code level. So we can have a heat map of the zip codes. And then we have the top 10 chronic diseases of that population. And then finally down here at the bottom, we have our patient list. What's really great is that you can download this entire patient list. It does have contact information so that you can use it. You know, while you're scanning at a population level, you can break it down to the patient level as well, which I'll show you a little bit more here in just a second. So now I'm gonna go ahead and apply a filter so that you can see how that changes things and kind of what you can do with it. So we're gonna go ahead and do 
a filter of looking at our type two diabetes patients. And I'm gonna also put a increased risk of inpatient admission as well. So I'm just gonna bump it up to 40 and apply that filter. And you can, again, save filters here. So if I wanted to save this for the future and run this you know, daily or whatever, um, you can do that as well. So now we have all of these sections that have updated and our 312,000 population is down to about 536. So this first category of actual information has updated to just be actual information on that population of 536. The next section is the predicted risk again. And you can see that now that we've taken that really healthy population, you know, um, no, no inpatient ad admission risk really, you know, we've taken them out and we can see that this, you know, this risk has definitely now kind of evened out. So we're seeing more people with the higher risk of um, all of these categories. In the next section, we can see the, um, anyone that's had this, the significant risk changes that's updated also, as well as all these ways of looking at our population. Um, so we can now see that actually everyone in our 536 population with that high um, inpatient admission risk has it, uh, multiple chronic conditions. The patient origin will have updated as well. And again, this can go down to the zip code level. And our top 10 chronic diseases have also updated. What's interesting is that since we have a filter applied for diabetes, we know that 100% of this population has diabetes. But we can also see that of that population, about 78% also has hypertension. So this is really nice for as you're enrolling members in care management programs that you know, you can focus on other things that might be beneficial to that population as well. So maybe including hypertension in some of the, um, you know, documents that you're providing or education that you're providing to the patient. And then down here again at the bottom, we have the patient list, um, which is now just those 536 patients. And as I mentioned, you can drill down to this patient level. So I'm going to open Bob Zimmerman's uh, profile here. And again, this is a demo environment. It's all demo data. There's no PHI in here. So I um, just wanted to call that out also. So here in this individual record, we can see uh, Bob's last 12 month statistics. So we can see these had three inpatient admissions, 10 outpatient visits, and some significant medical costs. Then we can see his future 12 month risk of each of those categories of estimated cost, inpatient admission, ED visit, and mortality. And then what's nice is that down here at the bottom, we can see what's really contributing to that risk. So it's gonna pull in things like his demographics. We can see that he's in um, you know, kind of an elderly age group that we look at the utilization, we can see that he's had 10 outpatient visits and three inpatient visits. So that's you know, significantly contributing to that risk as well. Um, looks at chronic diseases, acute diseases, factors that influence health status, um, and then disease events. So all these things are really what's contributing to this predicted risk. Now, if you wanted to kind of break this down even more and you're saying, okay, I can see that he's had three inpatient admissions or 10 outpatient visits, but what were those? Uh, that's when you would go back to MX Access, and all of that data is going to be listed in the encounters that you would see there. So you can see how you can really drill down in a couple of different ways um, and lots of different ways, like use cases that you can use for this. So while this is really great for scanning a population, you can really take it down to that individual patient level. The final thing that I will show you here is the transition risk overview. And when I go into this tab, it clears all my filters again. So I'm back to that full 312,000 population. And this is looking at anyone in that population that is active in an inpatient bed and their chance of being readmitted in the next 30 days. So of that 312,000, about 2,100 are currently admitted in an inpatient bed. And again, most of them kind of fall into that pretty low zero to 10% readmission risk range. But we can see that there's a significant number down here that has a really high risk of showing up um, to the hospital and being readmitted. So this can be kind of used in several different ways. Um, 
Are hospital participants like this because their discharge planners can just kind of understand maybe where they might want to spend a little extra time, provide a little extra handholding at discharge? Our ambulatory groups and health plans love this for care coordination post-discharge. So they know that they're, you know, again, going to need a little extra handholding, like making sure that they um, know where to get their medications, that they get their follow-up visits scheduled, that they have someone to bring them to their follow-up visits. You know, just making sure that they have everything that they need to really prevent them from showing back up to the hospital. And you can look at this population in a couple of different ways. Again, broken down by age and gender and patient origin. You can also filter this. So again, if you wanted to filter based off of um, you know, your diabetes population, for example, if you were only managing one specific population, you could do that too. And then we'll see the encounter list down here also. So this is really great, again, because with MX Analyze, while it is at the population level, you can break it down to that patient level and you can view that patient list. So it's great for identifying risk um, for you know, a, a subset of your population. Find your really high risk patients. Maybe that group of people is who you choose as your panel for MX Notify so that you know you, know, you wanna get notifications when they show up to the hospital. Uh, so there's several different use cases that our team would be happy to walk through with you based off of your individual uh, goals and situations. So feel free to reach out to us to um, dig in deeper and kind of talk about what would work best for you. Thanks so much.